I was born in Detroit on April 28, 1893. My father, Edward Hill, was an African-American dentist, and my mother, Mary Lance Hill, was a second-generation German-American. Because of my parents' interracial relationship, speculation surrounded the legality of their marriage and how it ultimately absolved. Some members of my family believed that they were married, and others believed my father was simply passing through. Whatever the case, I never knew my father, and my mother was left to raise me alone in white society. As rumors increased, my mother became desperate and placed me in an orphanage. For twelve years, I lived in the German Protestant home as the only African American and the only orphan to have his biological mother occasionally visit. When I became intolerant and old enough to leave, I returned to my mother's home on J Street. The neighborhood was fairly integrated with white, Jewish, and black families. Later in life, I would recall this neighborhood as one of my first experiences in dealing with race relations and interracial environments. During my high school years, I became active in several black churches, Second Baptist Church, Ebenezer African Methodist Episcopal, and Bethel African Methodist Episcopal. During my senior year in high school, I served as superintendent of the Sunday schools at both Bethel and Second Baptist Church and was a member of the usher board at Ebenezer. After high school graduation, I became torn between two professional areas, the church or business. I chose business and attended Cleary Business College in Ypsilanti, Michigan. After graduating in 1912, I accepted an apprenticeship with attorney William Patrick Sr. to pursue my interest in law. I helped him with 14 lawsuits against the exclusionary practices and segregated seating of movie theaters and participated in the NAACP campaign against the state bill that outlawed interracial marriage. While I studied under Patrick, I enrolled in a correspondence course at Moody Bible College in Chicago, Illinois. The degree I earned at Moody allowed me to attend Lincoln University in Chester, Pennsylvania. Lincoln University exposed me to the ideologies of W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, and issues of black rights. In 1918, I graduated from Lincoln University and decided to become a minister. I returned to my mother's home on J Street and found that Detroit had changed in the years I was gone. Racial tensions increased around European immigrants and Southern migrants who traveled to Detroit in search of job opportunities. I became assistant pastor under the pastorate of Reverend Robert L. Bradby Sr. at Second Baptist Church. Reverend Bradby, who became pastor in 1910, served for 36 years, playing an instrumental role in Detroit history. In 1919, he formed a relationship with Henry Ford, wherein he established employment for his growing congregation at Ford Motor Company by writing letters of recommendation. Each applicant had to comply with specific Ford criteria, which included reliability, compliance, and were decidedly anti-union. Reverend Bradby and other church leaders were skeptical of workers' unions, who, in the past, were exclusionary and did not protect the rights of African Americans along with their own. The alliance with Henry Ford to hire black workers proved advantageous to both parties. As a result, the congregation at Second Baptist Church gained 900 new members and the Ford Motor Company became the leading African American employer. In 1919, I married Georgia Underwood, and through the years, we were blessed with eight children, Charles Jr., Georgia Roberta, Wesley, Lavika, Bermisha, Sylvia, Brent, and Lance. In 1920, I became pastor of Hartford Avenue Baptist, organized by Second Baptist three years earlier. By 1926, Hartford had grown to be one of the ten largest black churches in Detroit. Unlike Reverend Bradby, I did not allow my church to participate in the church company alliance that Second Baptist had facilitated. I encouraged my congregation to improve independently by serving and participating in the community, as I myself was a member of the YMCA and the NAACP. I observed that within the church company alliance, the company often became an oppressive and controlling presence within the congregation. I found that unions better suited the needs of the black working community.